Today we'll be tearing down and reassembling a Fujitsu 3500 stylistic tablet. This tablet can be had on eBay for just a few hundred bucks at worst. There is a 3400 stylistic tablet, the difference being the processor speeds. Uh, 3500s have a higher processor speed in both the Celeron and the Pentium. This one is half the speed of the Celeron, so I could get better battery life out of it. To disassemble the uh, stylistic, you need to take care of a few things. Obviously the battery, you'll need to take out the hard drive. This is the PCMCIA slot, you don't really need to worry about that. There is also a radio slot for some of these. Um, various points of enclosure to screws. Uh, problem with this one is a while back I had a can of coke explode in my lap in my bag. So this is its second disassembly because apparently I did not get enough of the coke out of the latching mechanism right here for the battery. So it makes it very difficult. And with my last disassembly I did not properly seat my power port so it'll periodically lose power when it's plugged in and I'm trying to utilize it. By the way, the Microsoft certificate of serial number, whatever you want to call it, it is on top of the memory panel. That will also need to come off. So I will disassemble all the screws and take it to the next stage. Now, something to keep in mind here with the stylistics is that there are a couple different versions. There is the SVGA versions and the X. G A X V G A versions. X V G A versions are obviously 1024 by 768. The S V G A versions are 800 by 600 and come in two different versions. One is the trans is a trans reflective, where it's viewable in both daytime and backlit. While the other version is not daytime reflective, so you have to determine whether or not you want something that is viewable in the daytime as you're walking about. Or, if you want something of a 10 by 24 resolution, um, I don't know that you'd want an 800 by 600 that you couldn't see outside in daylight anyway. Uses a standard dim. Put it in your static bag. Now, you might need a couple of different kinds of screwdrivers. I just used a normal standard. There you go just a standard Phillips. You really don't need the smaller Phillips, but it comes in handy particularly if it's magnetized to get the screws out of the slots since they are slightly deep. The first trick you're going to come across here is the hard drive. It's shock mounted. By shock mounted they mean it's just pushed down inside of a really tight foam liner. To get the hard drive out, you use something like a knife and you will need to carefully pry up the stub and after that take a small standard and gently from underneath it lift it up. You can then go ahead and take it out. If you are going to be booting Linux off of this at any point or installing Linux, you will need to remove the hard drive in this fashion. This machine does not boot off of USB. Or, if you have a floppy drive, you can go ahead and attach an external floppy drive and from bootdisk.com or someplace like that, get a boot disk that has USB drivers for an external CD-ROM or for a USB thumb drive that is recognized as an actual hard drive. Once that, if that's the case, you can put, uh, you can repartition it using the, the floppy boot, or remove it and attach it to your favorite controller. And you can just gently remove the piece right here and attach it to uh, a two and a half drive external case or a two and a half drive USB adapter. 